Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to Angie Education. In today's uh, video, we're talking to our guest, Anna Pang, who is a undergraduate student, a finalist at uh, UCL uh, Barter School of Architecture. And um, Anna, it's great to have you back with us. Thanks for joining. Hi, Sunny. Thanks for having me back. No, great. So um, in this video, um, Anna is talking about the steps from zero to hero that you need to take to become a fully accredited architect in the UK and a little bit overseas. Uh, without further ado, let's go. Great. Uh, so Anna, uh, let's uh, jump uh, right into it. So I'm watching this. I know that I want to become an architect. Um, maybe I'm already studying. Maybe I'm just about to study. So how do you, you know, how do you become an architect? Can, you know, can I just go and, and get a job as an architect or, or do I need certain qualifications uh, first? So um, the road to becoming an architect is very long. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, rumors about it being uh, crazy long, but um, I think from starting point, it can take roughly seven years and that is divided up into three parts. So um, maybe now the people who are watching, you're thinking about applying for your part one, which would be your bachelor's in architecture, um, which potentially if you're studying in the UK, that would be a REBA accredited course. So um, then you move on to your part two. So. Um, sorry to interrupt. And REBA, no, what, what does REBA stand for? So REBA is the Royal Institute of British Ar Architects, and that is the sort of accreditation system in the UK for practicing architects. And the sort of, it's basically an organization and it's, basic, it's like if you were getting accredited to be an engineer or a lawyer or something like that, you need to have this part three accreditation to call yourself an architect and to be able to sort of license um, pieces of work. Um, so to get this, you kind of go through the stages, you do your part one, which is your bachelor's, and then uh, between your bachelor's and your master's, a lot of people choose to do a year out working, and this is uh, just sort of getting experience in industry, perhaps start earning some money. Um, then you can start doing your part two, which is your master's, that's typically two years, so your bachelor's is three years, sorry. Uh, your master's is typically two years, and then um, then you start to think about your part three. So your part three is sort of exam based and this is where you learn a lot of uh, stuff to do with building regulations and health and safety. And um, after you get your part three, then you are an official architect and you can start building random things. Okay. And, and so why does it take seven years? Because your undergrad takes three years, right? Masters is a year. <laughs> And then exams just do the exams after your master's. So what's you know why why does it take seven years? So your undergraduate is three years. Then your master's is two years. So that's five years. Then there's a compulsory sort of uh, year working, and that's sort of just like kind of like if you're doing a sandwich course or a year in industry, um, it's so that you can get some experience. And that year has to be done in a REBA accredited practice. So. Uh, most of the ones in the UK, I think, are re accredited, but you also have options of going overseas. So there are um, re accredited practices in other countries as well. Okay. And, and, and so when you said that after your part one, many people take a year out. So is this, you know, does this count towards the year of experience? Uh, yes. So um, you can do a year out between your part one and part two. So um, that would be kind of making it six years there. Then you can also do a year out after your master's before your part three. And that one is sort of more uh, compulsory, I guess. Okay. And, and, and then the, you know, the part three, so it must, must take a year, right? Yes. Um, so I think the way to do your part three can be sort of uh, more part-time, but uh, it sort of ends up with the exam sort of like, um, like the law exam, the bar or whatever, you have to uh, take a, a paper and then after that you sort of get your certificate and final accreditation if you pass it. Yeah. And can you do the exam, you know, is it a bit like A-levels, you just do them once or twice a year or can you do them, um, how frequently can you do the exams? 
Um, I'm not sure how frequently, like in terms of renewing it, uh, but I know that one is definitely the first time you take it. Uh, most of the work for um, your part one and part two is not exam based. So that would kind of be the main final thing. Um, so um, what I meant was, as um, for example, when you, you know, if you're doing English exam to, 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 to get a visa, you know, coming to the UK to study, like IELTS or, or TOEFL, you can do that pretty much every single week. Um, but for uh, like A levels, you just do them once a year, once you know January and June normally. So with these exams, is 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 it kind of limited that you just do one sitting once a year? Or I'm not sure if they're limited actually. Um, I haven't looked into that, but I'd assume you can probably do it once a year, maybe twice a year. Okay. But um, I would definitely look into that. <laughs> and. Um, and what I mean, what is the process take so long? Is this you know, health and safety, or I mean, why can you you know you can become an engineer, you can get an engineering degree or a physics degree with three years, um, but architecture takes seven. Um, so I think for architecture, uh, a lot of it isn't really so much knowledge based as in textbooks that you go learn, revise, and then you're prepared for it. A lot of architecture is understanding or developing the right sort of mentality when trying to create pieces of work. And that just comes through practice. Um, during your part one, your part two, you're gonna develop several projects, like a load of different design work. And it just helps you to develop your like language of uh, creating. What do you, what is your position on architecture in terms of like, how it sits with the environment and what forms you prefer. And then it, part three is, in my opinion, sort of wrapping it up and getting the actual um, pure facts down of what is safe, um, what needs to go into making a building. Okay. So, so someone actually tests you on your knowledge, you know, how much weight you can put on the certain floor and, you know, sort of how to structure to build the building. Yeah. How to make it stand up. <laughs> okay. okay. That's, that's good to know. Okay, and um, obviously, you know, this applies in the UK. And and what if you want to become an architect in America or in Japan or Australia? You know, can you can you study here through parts one, two, three, and then go to go get a job in Japan or at the firm in, in California? So I think the Reba accreditation is pretty well known across the world. However, if you are trying to practice in another country, you may have to take an additional exam. So like how you take the part three exam here, you might have to take a similar one in uh, sort of America, Europe, uh, Asia, these sort of countries. And that's so that you understand the building regulations of their country. Okay. Um, but I'm guessing because you already have all of this training, which is pretty rigorous, you should be, should, should be okay. Uh, the training in terms of design, I think is okay. Uh, but there are already sort of, there will be cultural differences in how uh, they go about designing. So it's always great to sort of get a handle on how those variations work, but you will have the like core foundations of how to design. Okay, great. Um, Anna, just as we're wrapping this up, um, what are your top three tips to someone who, um, and I ask this all the time, I'm sorry, uh, but what are your top three tips to someone who wants to be an architect um, from, you know, and they're, they're watching this at a point where they're just thinking of it, you know, top three tips for them to go from zero to, you know, to, to a paid architect. Um, so I have definitely said these previously, but I think the key things are knowing what you're interested in. That comes from reading, uh, drawing, and like just getting really immersed in the subject. Um, then step two is sort of keep like, look for opportunities that doesn't have to be in the rigid structure of the seven year degree of part one part two part three and um, like find like other ways of expressing yourself through work experience or um perhaps doing like additional courses and um i think for the third tip um i don't know try and like balance um balance your interests in terms of make sure you know how to separate what you're studying from what you're actually interested in and not to get lost in this huge world of architecture which can be quite daunting at times that makes sense
<laughs> um, Annabelle, all the best to you as, you as you're finishing up your part one exams. And um, yeah, all the best uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.